Hi, I'm Brian Bedard. I'm one of the solutions architects at AWS. And today I'm going to introduce you to AWS Elemental Media Live Anywhere and show you how to get started in the AWS console. Media Live Anywhere is a feature of the Media Live service, which allows you to encode video using your own on premises hardware. So many of you are already familiar with Elemental Live physical appliances or AWS Elemental Link contribution encoders. And many of you have actually already transitioned to Media Live as a fully managed cloud service. But Media Live Anywhere helps to bridge the gap between on premises and cloud workflows. So before I dive in, let me show you the hardware we're using for this. It's off the shelf. It was procured from one of our qualified hardware vendors and partners. And I have made a, a few physical connections to another version of this. Uh, we have one RJ45, and I had two SFP pluses connected. For this demo, I'm not connecting any of the SDI. Media Live Anywhere has a very similar feature set to Media Live with a few specialized additions. It uses the same APIs, console integration, and encoding engine under the hood, saving time by allowing one code base to control cloud and on premises channel creation and management. So let's dive into the console. Here we are in the AWS console. We're going to look for Media Live. We can do that a few different ways. We can look down by Media Services, or we could type in the search bar. But once we're in Media Live, we're going to see in the bottom left section Media Live Anywhere. We see networks, clusters, nodes, and SDI sources. Because this is running on your own network, now's the time to think about redundancy and how you want to handle it. So let's go ahead and set up a network. We'll call it test network. I'm going to leave the routes and the IP pools blank and default so that the system can take care of those for me for this demo. If you need more customized routing, um, you can work with your IT engineers to get that accomplished. All right, simple, we have a network. Now we're going to move on to clusters. So clusters, I like to think of as a logical grouping of physical appliances. Uh, clusters can also be designed with a single node, like I'm going to be doing right now. So I'll go ahead and create a cluster. We'll call it test cluster. For the instance role ARN, um, I'm going to copy and paste um, my ARN in. Um, if you don't have an instance role, um, Media Live will, will help you make one uh, at this point, um, and you only need to do that step once. Um, the network settings should be configured so you know which interface you'll be using. Um, the Linux naming conventions aren't always uh, straightforward to follow, um, and they can be a little confusing. So um, give the logical interface something that, that makes sense to you. Um, the goal here is to simplify the network uh, architecture and make it clear which interfaces you're going to be using at any different time. I'll use management zero because um, that's simple for me to remember. And I'll put that on the test network that we created. Again, I'll leave the default interface as default in blank. All right, great. We've just created a cluster. Now we get to add a node. We're going to give it a node name, test node, and we're going to leave it as active. This is where you could choose active or backup. If you wanted to have backup items available, backup nodes available, you want to make sure that they have the same hardware as your active nodes in case of a failover scenario. The node interface mappings is where you're going to tie the logical interface that you created, in my case, management zero, to the physical interface of the actual um, interface on the device. So in my example, uh, ENP8SO, 8S0. So that's not as easy for me to remember as management zero. I'm going to go ahead and create that. We are ready to move over to our physical appliance and actually copy this script and run it on the appliance. It 
So now that we've run the script, we're going to see the state of registering change from registering to active. You'll start to see CloudWatch metrics come in, and that gives you CPU utilization, memory, and disk utilization. So it makes it really easy to get a sense of how that node is performing, even when it's not encoding anything. So I'll jump back to clusters, go to my test cluster, and I have my test node. Last thing I'm going to do is create a channel placement group. We'll call this test channel placement group. I'm going to assign that node to it. That's going to allow us to have a failover group scenario if something happened and we had multiple nodes in that channel placement group, we would be able to move all those channels from one node to another. OK, that's created. Now I can go and create a channel. Um, as I'm looking at the channel and input details inside Media Live, just like I would as if this was a fully cloud-based channel, I go down and now I see my Media Live Anywhere settings. All I do is grab my test cluster and my test channel placement group, and then Media Live will send all the commands to encode remotely on your own on premises hardware. All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, learn more on our blog. Here's a QR code to, to a blog about Media Live Anywhere, or definitely reach out to your AWS account manager to get started. Thanks so much.